In this video, we are going to use rounding to estimate in real-world situations. Estimating helps us when we don't need an exact answer. So for this example, we need to figure out about how many seashells did the kids collect. And you can see that there are seven kids here, Ben, Natasha, Raul, Jorge, Gina, Jasmine, and Max. And if we were going to say how many hundreds, we want to round to the nearest hundred. So Ben, 278 seashells, the nearest 100 to that is going to be 300, because 78 is more than 50. Natasha, the nearest 100 is going to be um, 100, because 32 is less than 50. Raul, the, he, 76 to the nearest 100 would be 100, because again, 76 is more than 50. Jorge, 211, the closest 100 to that would be 200. Gina, 362, well 62 is more than 50, so we're going to round up to 400. Jasmine, 305 is very close to 300, so we're going to round down to 300. And Max, 61 is just over 50, but it is over, so we're going to round up to 100. So now that we've rounded to the hundreds, we just need to add up our hundreds, which is a lot easier to add than, than all these different numbers. So 300 plus 100 is 400, plus another 100 is 500, plus another 200 is 700, plus another 400 is 1,100, plus another 300 is 1,400, and finally another 100 is 1,500. So 1,500. So about how many hundreds of seashells did the kids collect? Be about 1,500 seashells. And again, this is just an estimate, and this is, this is the, the real-world application of estimation that you'll use throughout your entire life. Here's homework question one. On sum, summer vacation, Sheena and her neighborhood friends collected rocks. You need to round to the nearest hundred and tell about how many rocks did the neighborhood kids collect in all. Make sure to round to the nearest hundred. So remember, look at the last two numbers, and if it's above 50, you're going to climb the vine and you're going to round up to the next hundred. And if it's below 50, you are going to shut the door and you are going to round down to the nearest hundred. Estimating also works with distances. You've probably heard your parents or grandparents tell you, well, you're driving somewhere. Well, it's about two hours, or well, it's about 100 miles. So in, here's, in this example, there's about 1,700, there are, excuse me, there's 1,723.4 miles between Minnesota and Arizona. It's much easier to estimate and say that we'll drive about 1,700 miles from Minnesota to Arizona. We don't need to be ex exact when we're just when we're talking references on, on the road and when we're driving someplace. Okay, homework question number two. Cora and her family are driving from California to Maine and taking pit stops along the way. You need to estimate how many total miles they travel. You're going to want to round to the nearest thousand or hundred. So from California to Colorado, the first rounding you're going to do here is you're going to need to take 1,117.4 miles and round that to the nearest thousand because it's in the thousands. And I'll give you a clue to start you off. This one is going to be 1,000 miles, from about 1,000 miles from Col California to Colorado. Now you need to figure out and round to the hundreds for the rest of these states and add them together to figure to estimate how many total miles they will travel. Estimating can also help you figure out if you have enough money to purchase something. In this example, Jacqueline wants to buy a hot dog, a small soda, and some cotton candy. About how many dollars does she need? So we're going to look at the prices. For a hot dog, she needs about three dollars. For a small soda, she needs about one dollar. And for cotton candy, she needs about three dollars. So we can add these all up. Three plus one is four, plus three is seven. So she needs about $7, and actually she'll need a little bit more than that with the change. So we would say about $7 or $8, and $8 would make sure to cover it all. So homework question number three. You need to round each number to the nearest dollar and estimate the total cost. So again, round to the nearest dollar. So 
$5.94, is that going to round up? Are you going to climb the vine and round that up to $6? Or are you going to shut the door and round down to $5? You need to do that with all four of these dollar amounts and then add them all together. Now, ballpark estimates are just another way of estimating. And this is something that you'll use more in, in math class and maybe not, not as much so out in the real world. So for these numbers, you just need to round them and multiply. So 24, we could say 24 is close to 20. And 386 is close to 400. So we're going to do 20 times 400. And the shortcut to do that is just 2 times 4 is 8. And then I add on the zeros, and there are 1, 2, three zeros, so I add three zeros, so 8,000. So I could say 24 times 386 is about $8,000. Now for this next one, we're rounding $3.93, which I'm going to say is about $4, times 73, which I'm going to say is about 70. Now again, we can use the shortcut, so 4 times 7 is 28, and then we just have one zero, so we add the one zero on the end, so three dollars and ninety-eight cents times seventy-three is about two um, two hundred and eighty. We have two more problems now. So we are going to do four times nine hundred and fifteen in the ballpark estimate here. I'll do four times nine hundred because nine hundred is close to um, nine hundred and fifteen. So four times nine is thirty-six, and then we have two zeros. So we're going to add that on the end. So 3,600, 4 times 915 is about 3,600. And finally, our last one, $99 times 325. We'll round 99 up to 100. And then we'll round 325 down to 300. So 100 times 300. Again, we can use our shortcut. 1 times 3 is 3. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So the answer, $99 times 325 is approximately 30000 Homework question number four. You need to round these numbers and multiply to estimate. Round them to e so that they are easy numbers for you to multiply, and then you're, you will add your estimates together to get your final answer. Here is your last homework question, number five. Use your grocery list below and the prices to estimate your total cost. You need to round to the nearest dollar. So you'll have to see for the apples, for three apples, it's about $2 per apple. And then you'll go to the soup and the yogurt and the milk. And remember, you're finding ballpark estimates and you are estimating to the nearest dollar. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.